as we enter into the praise and worship portion of the church service, the word of the Lord says, Behold, blessed be ye, uh, behold, blessed ye the Lord, all ye servants of the Lord, which by night stand in the house of the Lord. It says, Lift up your hands in the sanctuary and bless the Lord, the Lord that made heaven and earth. Bless be out of, and we are making, right? We hear the worship God, let us stand to our feet, lift up hands, and praise the wonderful name of the Lord. Thank you. 
Lord Jesus, bless them a hundredfold as they give unto your ministry, dear Lord. In your holy name I pray. Amen. 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 I had the offering back somewhere. You want to see?
Sunday, man. You're a jalan man. I can't be bad enough. Let me get the money. I got it. I thought I was going to preach without this mic. The Bible seminary, tell you a little bit of history. I used to grab the salt shaker, and that guy was preaching at the Bible seminary. And the brethren got a kick out of it. <laughs> Here is live fire, right? Yeah, this is live fire. I want to say I appreciate Brother Chuck. Brother Chuck Duggan, did I say your name right, Brother Chuck? For um, helping us get into this place. Amen. 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 Our God is good. Yes. And, and, uh, and just a shout out to the First Presbyterian Church. Yes. Amen. 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 This is truly an act of love, right? Yes. Because, you know, they could have said, you know, but God touched their heart to say yes. Amen. Isn't Amen. God a Yes, he is. Amen. Amen. The Lord is good. And and our God knows how to touch the heart of anyone. Amen. 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 When we give our stuff to God, God said in so many words, I will begin to touch men's heart mm -hmm. and women's heart, and they will give it to your bosom. Yes. Press down, shake it together, and run it over. Yes. Amen. 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 We all ready to shout, huh? Amen. I'm ready to shout because it's real. Yes. What makes you shout is when you realize that it is this thing is true. This is not hocus pocus right. or something out of some comic book. Mm. We serve a real and a living God that does sin. Yes. Amen. Yes. A real yes. God that does a real and living God that does things. Yes. Amen. Yes. All right. So anyway, we're coming out of the book of Ezekiel, chapter thirty-seven. Ezekiel chapter 37. Sell it if you're from Joel 37. Good to have Shania in church. Amen. Amen. And her parents are like, this got to be the first. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Good to have Brother Glover's family here with us. Yeah. Yeah. Both sisters. What a blessing, amen. 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 All right. And it's good to be on have you guys online with us tonight. Yes. And just keep on watching this church grow. Amen. Amen. Yes. Keep watching. Yes. See you rebuild change. Yes. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 37, verses 1 through 4 reads The hand of the Lord was upon me. And carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley which was full of bones. And caused me to pass by them round the valley. And behold, there were very many in the open valley, and lo, they were very dry. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, thou knowest. Again, he said unto me, prophesy upon these bones and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. <laughs> and I want to stop right there in verse 4 because we're going to preach about the whole thing by the grace of God. In verse 4, it says, again, he said unto me, what did he say? Prophesy or speak or proclaim. Prophesied upon these bones and said unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Amen. And that's powerful, isn't it? Yes. That is a powerful scripture. And listen, our God is not into wasting people's time tonight, right? Amen. You are not here by mistake. That's right. The Lord has a real and very powerful message for your heart, right? We come to the house of the Lord for the purpose of God serving us, right? And so that we can take the syrup and begin to utilize it in our own lives. Amen. 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 We're here, yes, to worship God, but our God is here to serve us. This is a church service. Yeah. Amen. 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 And so God is going to talk to you tonight, and you can blame all the mistakes on me. I may mess up the English language, but the message will be clear tonight Amen. of what God will have us to do. Amen. And with the help of the Lord and the Holy Spirit, 
We want to preach on a message entitled in the first in gathering, Wake Up the Bones. Amen. Yeah. That's the title of the message, man. That's that preaching in and of itself. That's, yeah. that's good enough. We've already had church. Wake Up the Bones. Yeah, Sister Todd, that's what I said. Yes. <laughs> Sister Alice, if you don't mind asking God's blessing on this church for Sister. Gracious God, Heavenly Father, we come to you right now. In the mighty, powerful name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, we thank and praise you right now for this service. We ask that you will speak through the man of God, so that it be all of you and none of him, as we receive your word into our heart. Help us to focus and pay attention and receive his word. In your precious Son, Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. 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 I appreciate that prayer and everything. And so, and we're just going to get on with it because we got some people watching online. And so let's rock and roll with it. Here in the word of the Lord, it is obvious that there was a situation. Obviously, how that Israel was, they were downtrodden. Seemingly, here, they had lost a bunch, a bunch of their soldiers in war, a bunch of people had died. And so God began to take this man of God, Ezekiel, over to this valley of dry bones, right? The thing is, why did it happen this way? It's because of the fact that the children of Israel, they were not walking in the will of God. This was not the will of God for them to be downtrodden and beaten up on and everything, for them to be killed. We understand in the word of God, the promises made over in the book of, I believe it was, in the book of, uh, in the book of Judges, where God had told Joshua that there's not going to be any armies able to take you out. There are not going to be anybody out there, there's no enemies out there that's going to be able to bring you down. He said, only be encouraged to keep the word of God. Only be very courageous to walk in my will and walk in my way and be what I would have you to be. But yet the children of Israel have rebelled against God. They sinned against the Lord and now they wound up in this situation here that should not have been. But our God is merciful, isn't he? Our Lord is alive and God loves us, right? He would rather have mercy been judged, right? And our Lord is into remaking things and making things better. Aren't you glad about that? That the Lord is into making things better. When the people of God said, I'm going to be right with the Lord and I'm going to turn and I'm going to repent and I'm going to be what he would have me to be from this, from this day forward. And so therefore, uh, God in this scripture brought Ezekiel over to this uh, valley that was full of dry bones, and the word of the Lord tells us that these bones were very dry. They were very dry. These things have been here for a long time. No doubt, they were about to turn into ashes. They were about to turn into ashes, brothers and sisters, and to the point where it would have looked like there was nothing there. But God began to tell Ezekiel, he began to say, can they live? You know, sometimes the Lord will begin to challenge our faith, and he will begin to have a little conversation with us and say, can that thing live? If God asks you, can something live, you might as well say, yes, Lord, it can. Yes, God, because you are a God that can do anything. Hey, brothers and sisters, I'm here to Jesus that can do anything, right? Things can look hopeless. Things can, can look dried out. But when God says speak to it, brothers and sisters, it's time to speak to it and wake up the bones in your life. I'm here to tell you tonight that the Lord does not have us hopeless. He does not have you hopeless. Tonight, you're going to wake up the bones in your life. But you got to believe it. Yes. You gotta trust the word. Yes. You gotta take yes. it with you all the way to your house and tell the bones to break up. Yes. They're dead yes. and dry now. Yes. And God will wake it all the way up. Yes. 
according to our faith, right? But the Lord don't need any wrestling matches with your thoughts. He doesn't need to get in a battle with you about faith, right? We should uh, go ahead and say, Lord, have your way and wake up the bones yeah. in my life. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, in the word of the Lord. In the word of the Lord. Uh, when Ezekiel said, thou knowest. Uh, God told him to prophesy. He began to tell him to speak to it, right? Yes. Sometimes, brothers and sisters, we need to speak to the battles yes. that, that are going on in our life, right? We need to bring the word out and begin to speak to that thing. And he didn't sit there and get skeptical about it. He didn't sit there and become, uh, begin to look at the bones and say, you know what, God, this is kind of weird. Me being out here speaking to some bones. I'm used to speaking to people who are alive. He didn't sit there and try to figure it out. He just did it what God said, and he said it God's way, right? He said, tell the boss to hear the word of the Lord. Amen. 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 Sometimes you got to tell your situation to hear the word of the Lord. Amen. Amen. It is God's word, the same word that spoke the very earth into existence. This same word that said, let there be light, yes. and there was light when it was darkness. Amen. That same word that spoke man out of the depths of the earth. I'm here to tell you tonight that you can speak the word of God to anything. Yes. Yes. Hear the word of the Lord. Told the situation, listen to what God said. Then he brought that thing and said, Thus saith the Lord God unto these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and ye shall what? Live. And I will lay the news upon you, and bring uh, up flesh upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and ye shall live, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. And let me tell you something, when he began to command me, when he began to command me, he didn't sit there and ask it. He didn't sit there and beg. He commanded for these things to take place. And when he made the command, all of a sudden there was a shaking in the earth. Brothers and sisters, I like making a situation, right? You know, sometimes you got to shake some things up. Sometimes you got to get things moving when they are not moving. And as they begin to move and wiggle and things that begin to loosen up for you uh, in your life. I'm here to tell you that we would not be in this place if I would not have said I am going to make a situation. Yes. Let it live, Jesus. Yeah. Let the church be alive. Yeah. I spoke to the bones, brothers and sisters, and it ain't no way yet. Yeah. And all of a sudden, there was a shaking in her around. All around, like you see, something you never saw before, because you never seen it, does not mean that it will not happen. Yeah. Our God is able to do the things that we've never seen. Uh, before, right? Uh, the Bible tells us, uh, God speaking, he said, come and I will show you things that you know not. And you know what? You know this message is talking to you this morning. Yes. Tonight. Blame all the mistakes on me. I said this morning, but you know God is talking tonight. He said, I got some stuff you've never seen before, just like what I did in Ezekiel. This was his first experience of bones being put together. Mm. Hallelujah. <laughs> All around him, no doubt, Ezekiel's heart started pumping with him going. What in the world? Yes. Man, God is real. He probably brought it down to his knees as he found himself and said, Oh God. Brothers and sisters, we need to do things. We need to speak to the bones that are trying. And they will be ready, they will come alive. Just like God by the Holy Ghost is speaking to every heart. You can't even get your mind off this message. Because the Lord is not wasting your time. Amen. Yes, as uh, we look at this, he said, There was a noise, and behold, a statement, and the bones came together, bone to his bone. 
And when I beheld, all the sinews and the flesh came upon him, and the skin covered them above. But there was no breath in him. Let me tell you something. The Lord won't leave something in him. That's right. The Lord did not start it just to have a bunch of bodies laying on the ground. Our God doesn't do things like that. The Lord is into finishing stuff. He doesn't do incomplete work. He doesn't turn in an incomplete exam. Our God turns in the whole project. And it's going to have no marks on it. All it's going to, all we're going to do is say, God, I give you an A plus. An eternal plus. This grade point average is just off as out the roof. A perfect grade point average God has. Is it have eyes and zeros? Yes, the Lord, uh, the bodies were laying there, and he began to speak to the Son of Man. He said, Now prophesy unto the wind. Never done this before either. I never prophesied to the wind, but the God said, I'm going to yes. prophesy yes. to the wind. Yeah. Right? I'm going to speak to the wind, and I'm going to tell the wind by the authority of God what to do. You can tell things by the authority of Jesus what to do. Did you know that? Have you ever lived that? I tell it by the authority of God, be so. Tell it by the authority of Jesus, be done, and it shall be done. He began to speak to the wind. He began to prophesy to the wind. And he said, thus said the Lord God, come from the four winds, on breath, on breath, and breathe upon these slain, uh, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood up. Good God. Yeah. They stood up on their feet. I've never seen this before. A resurrection from the dead. Yeah. Jesus wasn't the only one that rose from the dead. These soldiers rose from the dead. Why? Because of a man who believed God and said, God, I'm going to do it your way. I'm going to say it how you would have me. Yes. yes. He began to speak to these bones. He then said, a son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. And, and then he said, behold, they say, our bones are dry, and our home is lost, and we are cut off for our parts. Therefore prophesy, and say unto them, thus saith the Lord God, behold, O my people, I will open your graves and bring you into the land of Israel. I will open up your uh, open up the hopeless. I'm going to get you out of the mess that you're in. I'm going to open up your grave. God said that. When the Lord opens the door, I'm here to tell you something. When God opens the door, no man can shut that door. No man can say, oh, these graves can't be open. The devil couldn't sit there and say, no, that's not going to happen. No, but God said that this is going to happen. And it Man, I'm telling you, you know what, man? I don't have time to listen to the naysayers, Sister Brady. I don't have time to listen to the towers because their life does not speak to me. A person who has no faith, they accomplish it. Do nothing. They do nothing. But Ezekiel did something this day. He caused an entire army to live. God needed a man he could use. God needed a person he could use that could wake up the bones. And God is looking to you to wake up the bones in your life. Whatever it is that's dead and dried up, God says, speak to it with my thoughts. Because God says, I am the king. Hallelujah. You have the king's authority over that thing. And because God said, I can speak to anything yes, yes. under his authority and able to believe. 
It's never a hopeless man. That's right. We try that bones around here, man. We're going to put some moisture in them things. We're going to yeah. wake this thing up. Yeah. That's what we're going to do. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yes. And guess what? As the eyes of the unbelievers look, as the eyes of even your own brothers and sisters who are growing in the faith, they got to grow to this message. Man, I want to be the message. I want to be this. I don't want to have to take years and years. We ain't got all these years, man. I'm 48 years old. I keep saying that over and over again because I'm going, you know, my time is right now. And it's time for a miracle. To take place in a small amount of time. So I can say, it seems like I've been doing this thing since I was 20. But because I finally accepted the scripture instead of just growing, it became what it is in rapid pace. And that's the same way it is in your life. Man, your years are precious. I look at time, I'm like, oh my God. I told Brother Chuck out there, I said, man, thank you for your time. Amen. Thank you for putting the time in this yes. I value people's time. Yes. Right? And I value your time tonight. I value your time tonight. And I'm here to tell you, I value it so much that I need you to live this scripture in your life. Yes. I need you to walk this way. I want you to be this way. I want you to discover a God that is deep. A God that has treasures that you've never seen before. You've got to do this tonight. You've got to do this tonight. You must live this. Or else you're going to run around and start. Confused and upside down. Year after year. It's a happy new year when we make up our mind. I'm going to tell the folks to live this year. Amen. Yes. 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 Nothing else. Somebody said, well, won't he do it? Yes. Amen. Yes, he will. Yes, right. He's shown sure enough with him. He'll do it all kind of ways just to make things happen. I'm like, my God. Amen. The first look at this place, this is just a step. And I have these crazy ideas. Crazy ideas. And I said, man, I'm going to do it in weeks. I said, boy, that's crazy. I'm going to make it happen in weeks. I like time pressure now. When, when, when the cooker is on, you only got a little bit of time. See, when, when the pressure ain't on us, we take our time. Yes. You know, we begin to say, oh, I got, we act like we got eternity to live sometimes. But when the pressure is on, is she going to be okay? Uh -oh. When the pressure is on, man, it's hot. Feeding time. Feeding time, yes. Let's go feed. Do <laughs> your thing. <laughs> time. It's important for the, 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 the little baby to feed at this time. <laughs> Amen. I don't blame the baby. But brothers and sisters, time is important. Yes. Oh, it's so important. You know, you, you realize, Sister Cop, that you just can't get it back. You can't get it back. And, and I don't care, man. And people say you can't be a Roman one day. Forget that. That has never worked since the day I heard. I say, build as much, build on if you can, if you are capable of doing that. Amen. You're moving too fast to so what? At least you're moving. That's right. Amen. At least you're moving. That's right. At least you're dedicated. Uh -huh. At least you said, this is going to happen. This is going to happen. I told one person, I said, I'm going to bring the whole church up. And I said, I don't care. Kicking it, screaming all the way to the top. We are on the way. Amen. So we're on the ride. Yeah. Yeah. Welcome to the ride. Amen. And I'm going to do whatever I can to bring all of y'all up. Yes. I'm going to be like Harriet Tubman. <laughs> Listen, she had a cat. Listen, we're going to freedom. 
And you either going to go or you're going to die. <laughs> but I might get in your face a little bit. Say so you got to be crazy. We can't stay down there. Amen. All right. We need to go up. Yes. I want yes. the whole everybody around me to yes. go up with me. Are you ready to go up? Yes. Are you ready to speak yes. to the dead dry bones and say yes? yes. Amen. Are you ready? Yes. Well, let's do this. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. Come on, brother. Well, let's have a uh, what do you know about Jesus? Hey, I can tear my voice up now. Sit down, man. Hey, let's do it. I already preached. Let me hurt myself tonight so I can sit down and whimper in the kitchen. Oh, no. Let's stand. Release some. Let's go for that. Right. If you're willing to 
speak to the dry bones and say, live. Wake up the bones. Yes. Amen. Let us bow our heads in prayer as unto the Lord. I'm going to have Reverend Serrano to say the dismissal prayer. Thank you, Father, Lord God, for your goodness. Your word, Lord God, for showing us how much you love us, yes. how much you care for us, Lord God. Thank you for each and every person that is present here tonight, Lord God, for the fellowship of the saints, Lord. We pray that you take each and every one, go with us, Lord. We pray that you are on our hearts and minds as we go about our business this week, Lord God. Keep you and remember this, Lord, what you've done. We ask this in the mighty name of Jesus. Let your name be glorified. Amen. 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 Show yourself friendly. God bless you.